And welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden and with me, the expert himself, Matt Sims. Hi, Keith. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks, Matt. Uh, good to have you along. Spring is springing. It, you can feel it on the air. The daffodils are pushing up. The hyacinths are blooming. So what should I be looking for? in my motorhome to prepare it for the fabulous year ahead. Sounds wonderful. Well, the, one of the first things I suggest is go and download our Spring Your Motorhome Into Action Guide. It's a free guide that you can uh, get from the website, and um, there's a link in the description for this podcast. Um, and it talk, walks you through uh, some of the stuff you need to be doing and checking on your motorhome or camper van, or even your caravan, uh, if it's been in storage for, for a few months. I guess you need to kind of do the reverse of what you did to get it ready for the winter, assuming, of course, you did. Um, and one of the first things you're going to want to do is is, is to get, get it started, um, assuming it's not a caravan, um, and uh, and get it moving. Um, and that can be a challenge because no doubt the battery's flat. Um, so there's a number of ways of getting that going. Again, you can put it on charge if you've got access to power. Um, hopefully, throughout the winter, you did once a week or maybe once every 10 days take it for a drive and, and therefore kept the batteries charged up um, by taking it for a 30-40 minute drive, which means it will start at this point. If it doesn't, you need to be really careful about using a booster pack. So those are the often red boxes with the two big crocodile clips. Uh, they can do lots of damage to the ECU, the electrics of the of the motorhome. That's so, the electronic control unit, isn't it? ECU. It is indeed, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the thing that manages your engine. It's the brain, basically. And it can put a big charge across that and, and damage it. So be really careful about using a booster pack. A jump leads are possible as well. Again, you just need to be careful. Um, so connect them directly to the battery is my advice. Uh, if you're using a, a booster leads, then then connect them to a car that's capable of starting the motorhome and just let it run for half an hour, putting a charge in. And then hopefully it will turn over and, and, and away you go. And there is very much a right and a wrong way, isn't there, of, of jump starting a car even from a, a booster pack. So, it, you know, it, it's as good to look on something like a YouTube or maybe an online tutorial to make sure that you've got it absolutely right for the vehicle that you've got. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just being make, making sure you don't short anything out that's red and black and they don't touch each other. <laughs> well, uh, pretty basic stuff, really. I, I don't want to dwell on the negative. Let's be positive. It's springtime. Uh, we've got the thing started. Uh, we've done what we should have done uh, in the winter and put it to bed properly. What's the next thing we should be thinking of? I, w I would give it a wash. Um, once it's started, I would, I would give it a roof down wash. So get up on the roof. If you can walk on the roof, if you feel safe to do so, or the motorhome is built for that you can. Um, if yours is a van conversion, so it's a metal van, they'll dent really easily. So I would advise a ladder up against the side of it with maybe a pillow wrapped around the ladder or some pipe lagging, lean it against the van and, and just really carefully wash the roof. Some people uh, don't like using pressure washers on their motorhomes, and that's a good point. Um, we at work use them, uh, we have very expensive pressure washers which are downgraded in terms of the pressure that the pressure washer applies. So if, if you're using a pressure washer, just don't go anywhere near the seams and the sealant because it can blow that away. Don't go anywhere near the fridge vent because water's going to get into the back of your fridge and could short it out and do other damage. So if you're using a hose and a brush, that's the best way. Get yourself some proper uh, cleaning it as uh, a chemical don't use washing up liquid for goodness sake it rots all the rubbers away so use a proper motorhome or caravan cleaning substance mix it up in the bucket as as instructed and give start with the roof and work down um, I would also suggest opening all the roof lights and all the windows and give them a good clean with a cloth underneath and getting them all clean make sure the sills are clean as well so then they're gonna they're gonna seal properly as well you mentioned uh, not touching the uh, the vents for the refrigerator with a pressure washer. So what's the right way of, of cleaning that? Um, I would use a, a specialist brush uh, in a bucket and a hose uh, where you can point the water and make sure it's not going into any of the vents. So what is wrong with using that pressure washer I got from the TV shopping channel or the DIY shop? Yeah, so as I say, it can blow the sealant, the white sealant, like the, the uh, silicon sealant, out of the joints in the motorhome. Um, and the other thing that will happen is it will blow the water uh, pressure under a roof light or even under a window and put it inside the motorhome. So you'll go in and it's soaking wet inside. And, and you definitely do not want that. OK, so I've given it a clean. The thing starts. I'm getting very excited. I'm dreaming now <laughs> of the family in it. 
in a couple of months' time, hitting the open road. But I haven't finished, have I? No, there's still lots to do. So maybe you covered up the vents to stop rodents or spiders going in. So the fridge vents or the, the roof vents, um, you might have covered them up. Make sure all that tape is removed um, and uh, give it a good airing. So at that point, you will then want to open all the windows and really air it out. Uh, turn over all the cushions, check them for mould. Uh, and and just let the whole motorhome air. If it's a warm day, brilliant. If it's cold and damp, then this is much harder to do. Um, so really wait for a good spring day with the sun out um, and just turn everything over, open all the cupboards, give them all a really good clean inside. Uh, and while you're doing that, of course, you can be checking for any signs that you've had mice. Now, in our prepare for winter guide, the last tip was to leave a little piece of chocolate on the floor of the motorhome and and if that's still there at this point untouched brilliant no mice no rats nothing like that's got into the motorhome if it's gone or there's teeth marks in it you need to start investigating and that can be very serious mice are very good at getting in the tiniest of holes literally the the ink fill point of a pen the hole that big a little tiny mouse can get through there as we discussed before um and and so you need to be checking the seat belt mounts seat belts are really tasty to, to mice uh, and having a seat belt that's been half chewed through is going to mean you fail your mot uh, and and check electrical connectors um, check in the engine bay as well if you can open the air box the air filter box uh, mice love to nest in there i i've seen lots and lots of motorhomes with where mice have been making a nest in the engine bay so have a really good look around it clean everything out that you possibly can checking for for, for mouse droppings the other big thing you need to do is the water system so getting the water system ready again to use if there are drain taps and you've opened those ready for winter the frost valve if you've got an auto frost valve if you're listening to this you'll you might know what that is if not check your user manual you need to make sure all those taps are closed which keeps the water in the motorhome my advice then is to treat the water system so with a product like PuraClean, do not use milton uh, I know it's safe for babies. Milton is not friendly to our boilers and the uh, the heater elements in the boiler. It will rot it. And and the people that make the boilers, people like Truma, say do not use Milton in, in, in your boiler. And, and we must quickly just say it's nothing against Milton. It's a great product. No, it's not just not right for motorhome. That's it, yeah. It, it actually kind of negatively, badly affect the, the, the heater element. So use, use a specialist water purifying tablet or uh, powder um, and treat the tank based on the size of the tank. The packet will tell you how many tablets to pop in. You can drink this stuff. It's perfectly safe. Sometimes you get a slight taste of chlorine, but fill the tank, give it a good rinse round, run all the taps, get all of the air out of the system, get the hot water on, run it through the boiler uh, with this specialist cleaning uh, uh, water purification stuff uh, and, and then empty it all out, rinse it out, and then you're good to go. The water system, you know then, is safe to use. One thing I'm learning about uh, owning a motorhome is actually the, the amount of maintenance you do have to do. Um, you mentioned uh, we talked uh, just a couple of months ago of putting it to bed for winter. Now we're talking about waking it up for spring. There's a lot of work involved, isn't there? There is, yes. And, and a lot of it you can do yourself um, at no cost. But you do need some knowledge and expertise, which is why we're running this podcast. And it's why we did this free guide to help people understand uh, what they need to do. You can, of course, pay people to do this for you. There's a, a thing called a habitation check, which is kind of like an MOT of the living area. Um, there's lots of discussion and debate about the value of a habitation check. If your motorhome is newish and thus still under warranty with the manufacturer, it will be a requirement of the manufacturer that you have that habitation check done every year in order for them to continue to honour your warranty. And, and a habitation check includes gas system checks, safety checks, electrical checks. They, uh, an engineer will be well trained in doing it and approved often by a national scheme like the NCC or the AWS or MCEA. There's, there's lots of ways you can find an engineer to do this for you. Um, uh, and, and they'll also check all the drawers, the curtain glides, um, check every door is opening properly. Um, they'll also do a damp check uh, and with a specialist damp meter. I, I've known lots of people say, well, I've, I've done a damp check, there's nothing wrong with it. And they've been using a £10 damp meter from the range, you know. 
Well, the damp meters we use are 700 pounds. They're very, very different. It's a bit like the kit you've got for recording a podcast. You know, I can record one on my phone, but here we are with all this posh kit that costs hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Same with the damp meter. So get an engineer to do a damp check and a full habitation check of your motorhome. If you time that, that it's in the spring before you start using it, you know all of the systems are safe. And if you're taking your family with you, that's obviously really, really important. Two things obsess people about motorhomes and space travel. Can you guess what they are? <laughs> You've lost me. <laughs> Toilets. Toilets. And cooking. Uh, what, yeah. what do we need to do in springtime to make sure we're okay to take it out? And well, it's, it's safe and it's not going to leak. So gas is really important. Um, the flexible pipe that you connect to your gas bottle will have a date on it. That needs to ideally not be more than five years old. Uh, it's called a pigtail, and then you should replace it. Um, they're not expensive, but um, the the guidance on that pigtail is because you're moving it and it's moving around, after five years you should replace it. In a habitation check, that will come to light if you've got an engineer doing that for you. But you can easily check it's printed on the hose and you can you can check the date on it. And And checking the integrity of the gas system is something you really need to leave to a professional. Um, making sure your hob is clean, the burners are clean, the thermocouple works, and that means if you leave the gas on and the flame blows out, it will shut off automatically. It's a really important safety feature, and they do fail. So having a, this habitation check done will mean you, you've got that peace of mind that that's sorted. It, and, and the same with the heating system. If it's gas-powered, the engineer will check that for you as well. And they'll check all the vents. They'll check the flue is not blocked. Um, we had a motorhome recently as a year old on, on our hire fleet, and the heating would not fire. And it was, it was really confusing. And it was a spider had made a nest in the flue and blocked it so the boiler couldn't breathe. So we blew this... You know, the remnant of the spider had gone, you know, it had left us, but left this its house behind and broke the heating system. And, and an, air, an air gun inside blew it all out and, and, and lo and behold, it started working. Remarkable. Um, in terms of the toilet, um, there's uh, various lubrication sprays you can use. I got that. Lubrication. Lubrication. Yeah. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do that, Keith. I'll get me coat. <laughs> Don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry uh, for interrupting. Yeah, lubricate. That's all right. So you can lubricate the uh, cassette toilet. Um, what do we call it? Blade. You can lubricate the, the uh, cassette toilet blade uh, and making sure that's working properly. Uh, again, there's loads of content that people doing this on YouTube. Um, and just flushing your flush through the toilet flush. Often what happens, you'll flush the toilet for the first time and all this horrible black stuff will come out. And it's just... It's basically mould that's formed in the water and all these bits come out. And that's why you're not going to drink that water, of course, um, but it's, it's living in the pipes. And, th and this is why you must treat the drinking water side of the system before you fill it and drink it. Really important. And so is it worth treating the toilet side as well, is, given that there's a bit of mould in there? Or, or does it just uh, come out quite naturally? And it, will come out, it, will, it will just flush out yeah. into the bowl. So, so it won't... Block, block the toilet when no, you no. use it. No, no. And make sure you're using proper toilet chemical in the cassette as well, which, of course, will rot down poo and wee and paper. Um, there are specialist toilet papers you can buy. Uh, uh, Thetford make a, a specialist toilet roll which will uh, dissolve really quickly. Um, and if you don't want to go to that expense, two-ply uh, from Tesco or Asda is, is fine. I always say avoid three-ply and puppy dogs because it's just going to turn to mush. <laughs> So uh, we've talked mainly uh, in this podcast uh, about checking what's behind the driver, the uh, the, the habitation, as you, as you say. But it is a motorhome, and, and you've got to look under the bonnet as well, haven't you? You have, yeah. Check all the fluids, the oil, um, screen wash, power steering fluid, brake fluid. Um, maybe at this time of the year it ties well in well with the when the MOT is due or the engine service is due, which is a different. Uh, service often done by a different garage although not always some will do a habitation check and they'll do the engine and chassis service as well but there are things you can do yourself so checking the fluids it's really common sense stuff checking the tire pressures a visual inspection of the tires lots of motorhomes have what's referred to as a camper tire uh, and uh, continental and michelin both make them uh, they have reinforced sidewalls and often a slightly different 
tyre tread pattern, which makes them appropriate for all year use. The tyre walls are thicker because motorhomes stand around a lot, and that's one of the key differences, as I understand it, um, to a camper spec tyre. There may be others. If there are, leave them in the notes. We'd love to know what they are. But um, check they're not cracked. The tyre walls and inside the treads can crack just with age, just with standing in the sun, um, and, and that can be dangerous for a tyre and can be an advisory or even a failure point on an MOT. And remember, check behind the tyre, the rear tyre wall, really hard to do because um, it's quite it's not very accessible, but it's really important if you can't get the vehicle on a ramp that you get down underneath and have, and have a good look. So again, common sense, check your tyre pressures. Um, lots of debate around the correct tyre pressure for a motorhome. Um, it's all based around the weight that your motorhome is going to weigh. There are some great apps and websites that will help you and guide you on that. Um, and if you're not sure, contact the tyre manufacturer and they will give you a, a bit of a steer as well. Now, we started this podcast with me saying I, I didn't want to be negative. I want to be positive. But of course, we have to talk about the things that can go wrong. But uh, owning a motorhome is great fun. I, I've done these checks that you've mentioned so far. Is there anything else I need to be thinking about before I can uh, take it out on the road and start enjoying it with my family? Remember to check your driving license. Um, it's something we overlook. But if you, when you turn 70... Uh, you have a C1 entitlement on your driving licence if you passed your test after January 97. Um, we're not going to deep dive into what that's all about now. In this podcast, we're doing another one. But um, it, it, if you've got that entitlement and your motorhome weighs more than three and a half tonnes and you've turned 70, you will lose that C1 entitlement and you can no longer legally drive your motorhome. So you can have that entitlement reinstated. It's a simple medical with your doctor, which you have to pay for. Um, and prices vary depending on what your surgery charge. It's a, it's a pretty standard uh, medical check, and that application goes to DVLA, and it will be reinstated for you. So don't panic if you're turning 70. They're not going to take your licence away permanently. You just need to have that medical check, which seems like common sense, really. Yeah, it's only the C1 you lose. You don't lose your licence, just the C1 entitlement, so to drive a lorry up to 7.5 tonnes. If your motorhome's 3.5 tonnes or less, which the majority are, just check your licence is in date. Um, the photo driving licence expires every 10 years. It's a great time just to, as you're getting your motorhome ready, think, I must check my licence, and just check the date it expires. And it's a simple process to renew it. It was one of the big things, wasn't it, around Brexit, uh, where we're going to be getting our blue passports back again. And of course, we've all got EU driving licences, uh, haven't we? I mean, I wonder if there's any changes around that with our licences, if we're renewing. I don't know. No, we should look that up and maybe talk about it in another podcast. Yeah, I think we're losing the EU logo on the licence. Mm. Um, I wonder if we're losing any entitlement to drive in Europe. Like I say, I think we should investigate that in another podcast. Yeah, I think we should. Mm, yeah, mm, that's an interesting one because it's nice and easy, isn't it? Especially if you're listening, on, you know, in London or the popping down to the south coast and uh, over, over on the ferry and have a little bit of a drive around Normandy this summer. I, I think the UK license has been acceptable. That it's been deemed to be acceptable on the content. We'd we'll need to check. Yeah, and the GB yeah. stickers and all all the rest of it. So, Matt, uh, we've mentioned I think nearly everything. Is there anything obvious that we've forgotten? Uh, well, one of, there's lots of other things to, to mention, and, and there's more in this guide that you can download for free. But uh, one thing to mention, if you're going to the continent, make sure you've got a UK sticker on the back of the motorhome or camper van, not a GB one. Um, the GB ones are no longer valid. So if you've got that on your number plate, you, need, you can buy stickers to overlay. If you've got that oval uh, GB sticker on the back, you can buy oval UK ones. Um, it's a... I think it's a bit daft, but United Kingdom includes Ireland, and that's the whole point of it. Yeah, Great Britain is on your passport. If you check it, it's Great Britain and Northern Ireland, isn't it? And UK, as you say, includes Northern includes Ireland. Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's important for people in the EU for them to know it. It's not for us. It's not about stickers on our cars. It's about the police on the continent identifying yeah. your vehicle yeah. and going to the right database if they need to make a check or something like that. Yeah, and the GB one is no longer valid. So. No longer valid. And they will pull you over for it. They will, yeah. yeah. We, if you want a GB sticker, I've got a box of them that we couldn't sell. So, <laughs> Looking for bunting for the Diamond Jubilee. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Hey, good idea. Well, Matt Sims, our motorhome expert, thanks very much for joining us on the podcast. We'll be back with another Motorhome Matt podcast very soon.